Mental GT. It's useful to know how to remove the wheels from your motorcycle in case a tire gets punctured. To remove your front wheel, first prop the motorcycle on its frame with a jack. If a jack isn't available, get somebody to press down on the rear wheel. Remove the fork pinch bolt in the right fork leg. Use a spanner to hold the right side wheel spindle. Then loosen the wheel spindle nut using a 24mm ring spanner. Remove the washer and wheel spindle from the front wheel. Gently slide the front wheel out. Place a cardboard sheet in between the brake pads. To reassemble the wheel, follow the reverse procedure. A Continental GT. It's useful to know how to remove the rear wheel from your motorcycle in case it gets punctured. Park the motorcycle in neutral gear on a firm flat surface with the rear wheel off the ground. Insert a punch into the wheel axle to hold it in place. Then use a 24mm ring spanner to loosen and remove the wheel nut. Remove the chain tensioner and lock nut with two 12mm open end spanners. Then loosen the chain tensioner and lock nut with the same two spanners. Push the axle from the right to left and remove the caliper assembly from the swing arm and wheel. Place a cardboard sheet in between the brake pads. Remove the wheel axle from the swing arm and remove the chain from the rear sprocket. Gently remove the rear wheel. To reassemble the wheel, follow the reverse procedure. Place the motorcycle on the center stand on a level ground before checking the oil level. Start and warm up the engine for two minutes. Turn off the ignition and wait for two to three minutes. Now check the oil level at the inspection window on the right hand cover. There are two level marks, maximum and minimum, on the inspection window. If the oil level is below the minimum mark, top up until the level is in between the maximum and minimum mark. Always use Royal Enfield recommended oil only and never mix two different grades of oil. Make sure the cap is screwed back on tightly. Lentil GT. Today, we're going to take a tour of your instrument cluster which gives you vital information about your motorcycle's functioning. Position the motorcycle on its center stand on level ground. Switch on the ignition. The motorcycle self-checks all its parameters. This is the set button which lets you view or reset your odometer and trip meter. To view the odometer reading, press the button for two seconds to toggle from trip A to trip B to ODO. To view the trip A reading, press the button for two seconds. The LCD screen will change from ODO to trip A. To view the trip B reading, press the button for two seconds. The LCD screen will change from trip A to trip B. To reset either trip A or trip B readings to zero, continuously press the set button. The odometer cannot be reset as it records how much the motorcycle has run since it was manufactured. To change the reading from kilometers per hour to miles per hour, first turn the ignition off. Now press the set button. Turn the ignition on and keep the set button depressed for 10 to 12 seconds. To know which software version your motorcycle is fitted with, switch off the ignition and keep the set button pressed. The software version appears for two seconds. Now let's learn about the warning indicators. Switch on the ignition, the warning lights will light up on the tachometer. To begin with, this is the low oil pressure indicator. It lights up when the ignition is switched on and goes off when the engine starts. 
If the indicator stays on while riding, or if the engine doesn't start when the indicator is on, check your oil level. If the engine oil is sufficient, take your motorcycle to a service centre immediately. Next comes the low battery indicator. It lights up when the ignition is switched on and goes off when the engine starts. If the indicator stays on while riding, or if the engine doesn't start and the indicator is on, contact the service centre immediately. This is the EBS indicator. It lights up when the ignition is switched on and goes off when the speed reaches 5 km per hour. If the ABS symbol stays on when riding, it means that the ABS system has a fault. However, your normal brakes will function without ABS. The neutral symbol tells the rider that the motorcycle is in neutral gear. The light goes off when the motorcycle is in gear. The high beam symbol tells the rider that the headlight is on high beam. It goes off when the light is shifted to low beam. The turn indicator symbol tells the rider that the indicator is on. It goes off when the indicator is switched off. This is the engine malfunction lamp or EML. It lights up to indicate that the engine management system isn't working properly. The light should go out once the engine starts. If the EML stays on when riding, take your motorcycle to a service centre immediately. Raptor or Continental GT Today we're going to focus on another important part of your motorcycle, its battery. To remove the battery, first switch off the ignition. Remove the right-hand panel to access the battery. Open the left-hand panel with a 4mm Allen key. Remove the toolbox. Then disconnect the negative coupler. Always remove the negative terminal first and then disconnect the positive terminal. Remove the battery holding bracket and pull the battery out. A Continental GT. Your motorcycle's chain requires regular inspection and maintenance because it's a moving part that is exposed to moisture and dirt. This is a simple process that takes very little time. Park the motorcycle on its center stand on a level surface so that its rear wheel rotates freely. Rotate the chain slowly in the clockwise direction and remove visible dirt and grease with a soft cloth. Apply RE Essentials Chain Cleaner on its inner surface. Now wait for three minutes to allow it to penetrate. Now wipe the chain with a soft cloth. The chain is clean, but you still need to lubricate it. Leave the motorcycle on its center stand. Shake the can of RE Essentials chain lube well. Rotate the chain in the clockwise direction. Apply RE Essentials chain lube between the chain plates and rollers. Once you're done, wait for 15 minutes. Now wipe the chain with a soft cloth. Do not use the same cloth that you use to clean the chain. Finally, start your motorcycle. Put it in gear and gently allow the wheel to rotate so that the lube penetrates better. Oil and field interceptor or Continental GT. In the unlikely event of your motorcycle not starting, what can you do? Here's a four-step process. Check whether the ignition switch is on. Check whether the kill switch is on. Check whether there's fuel in the tank. If not, fill it up. Check if the fuel pump is working by listening for this sound in the fuel tank. If there's no trouble with your fuel supply, proceed to check the fuses. The fuse carrier is located below your seat. Open the right-hand panel and pull the seat release. Open the fuse carrier lid. Gently remove and check the fuses. Begin with the main fuse. And then the ECU or electronic control unit fuse. If a fuse is blown, replace it 
with the replacement fuse available in the fuse carrier. Should you still face difficulties, check your battery connections. Open the left-hand panel with a 4mm Allen key. Check if the negative connector is secure. Check the negative terminal and check the positive terminal. Now check the spark plugs. Check if the plug and cap are wet. If so, dry them. Check the gap between the electrode and spark plug. It should be between 0.7 to 0.8 mm. Check the connection with the HT lead. And if there's a spark between the HT cable and spark plug, GT. Your motorcycle has two spark plugs. You'll need to check them once every 5,000 kilometers or 3,000 miles. First, ensure that the ignition is off and the engine is cold. Then remove the suppressor cap and spark plug. Clean the insulator tip and electrodes using a clean cloth and set the electrode gap between 0.7 mm to 0.8 mm. Replace the spark plug every 20,000 kilometers or 12,000 miles. Carbon deposits in the spark plug cause misfiring. Clean them off with a clean cloth. Remove the plug from the engine, leaving the suppressor cap attached. Place the tip of the spark plug against a metallic surface and press the starter button. If there's no spark, interchange the spark plug with the other plug on your motorcycle. If there is still no spark, contact your service center immediately or Continental GT. Your motorcycle slides are critical for a safe ride. Here's how to keep them working well. Use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen the screw on the rim and remove the headlamp dome. Disconnect the headlamp socket. Push and remove the bulb holding clamp. Using a paper or dry clean cloth, remove the bulb. Position the new bulb with the three projections on the bulb aligned with the slot on the reflector. Refix the bulb holding clamp. Reconnect the headlamp socket. Put the headlamp dome on the headlamp shell and screw it back on. Check if the headlamp is working. Open the right hand panel. Pull the seat lock cable to remove the seat. Remove the tail light glass by unscrewing its mounting screws. Hold the bulb, press inside and rotate anti-clockwise to remove the bulb from its holder. Replace with a new bulb. Replace the bulb and screw the tail light glass back on. Check if the tail lamp is working. Remove the screw from the back of the trafficator housing. Open the indicator housing. Remove and replace the bulb. Refit the holder, fitting its lock properly. Fix the rubber gasket cover and reassemble the indicator housing cover. Check if the trafficator is working. If any of the bulbs are still not working after the replacement, then take your motorcycle to a service center immediately. Your Royal Enfield Interceptor or Continental GT. Today we are going to look at how you can adjust your clutch cable. Your clutch cable should ideally have a play of 3 to 4 mm. If it's more or less, 
here's what you should do. Use the 12mm open end spanners to loosen the cable lock nut on the clutch cover. If the clutch plays too much, turn the other end nut clockwise to reduce the play. If it's too tight, turn the same nut anti-clockwise to increase the play. Then check the clutch free play. Once you're done, tighten the inner nut and lock the outer nut. You can also adjust the clutch play at the handlebar by turning the screw clockwise to tighten or anti-clockwise to loosen the clutch play. Interceptor or Continental GT. Today we're going to look at how you can keep your throttle cable in good shape. Use a 4mm Allen key to remove the throttle cable protector cover. Use two 12mm open end spanners to adjust the throttle body rotor pulley and ensure the free play is 2mm to 3mm. Then start the bike, accelerate while in neutral and turn the handlebar all the way from the left to the right. Your idle RPM should not change. 